The first of Peter Capaldi's Christmas specials is called Last Christmas. It's a big mess. It's an entertaining enough episode, but at the end of the day, I'm not a big fan. It involves these evil alien head crab things that can induce inception-like layered dream effects in the people that they affect. And it's cool. It makes for some cool visuals. It's another episode which tries to put a horror spin on Christmas the imagery, but all of their abilities end up coming across as like super plot contrivy rather than the logical abilities that an actual creature might have. And despite the fact that they're really cool looking, like they're freaky looking and it's the kind of horror imagery that you guys should know at this point I get a real kick out of, but they just don't interest me much. And all of the like really cool and surprising elements of the episode end up being just dreams. Like Santa Claus is in this episode, but he only exists in a dream induced by these creatures, so he wasn't actually real. And there's a fake out at the end where it seems like the Doctor is never going to get to see Clara again. Clara being his current companion at the time. But they end up going back on that, it turns out to be, and it's all a dream style fake out. And like, I didn't want him to never get to see her again, but the it's all a dream fake out is still a bummer whenever you come upon it. It involved a whole bunch of scene transitions, a bunch of really fast-paced scene transitions, like going from one place to the next as one dream started or one dream ended pretty much instantaneously. It got kind of confusing following everything. I think it was a really valiant attempt to make a really layered, really complicated horror-style Christmas episode, but it just didn't work for what it was trying to do. Unlike the next one, which is probably my favorite episode of the modern era of Doctor Who. Like, my favorite standalone individual episode that, while it does help to know stuff from previous episodes, you don't really have to to get what's going on here because the story of the episode does a good enough job of making it obvious what the characters' motivations are and what their dynamics are and it's the Husbands of River Song, the final appearance of the character River Song, the Doctor's wife, in the entirety of the series. In fact, the finality of this appearance is so obvious that I don't see how they could possibly bring the character back again. River Song is such an interesting character who has a very interesting dynamic with the Doctor and a very interesting personal history as well as a very interesting history within just the show itself. She knows that the Doctor is a Time Lord. She is effectively a Time Lord herself, so she understands the concept of regeneration. And so she thinks she knows what all of his faces look like, but his Peter Capaldi face is brand new. He didn't expect to even get it. The other Time Lords gifted him with more regenerations so that he could regenerate again, and he turned into Peter Capaldi. Because of this, when he shows up on a planet where River is doing her regular thing. She tends to be pretty morally ambiguous when the Doctor's not around to keep her in check, and even to an extent when he is, because she doesn't really listen to him very well. She doesn't recognize him and mistakes him for one of her accomplices, a surgeon who she intends to employ to remove the head of an evil fascist dictator because he has a diamond lodged in his head that she wants to sell and make herself obscenely rich. It's a hilarious situation. The episode itself is very funny. It's a comedy episode primarily, and the comedy in it lands really hard. Like, there's this running gag throughout the entire episode where the doctor is dropping hints for River as to who he is, and she never picks up on them, despite the fact that she is just as perceptive as he is on any average day. And the doctor's reaction where he finds out that the woman he married also married this horrible dictator guy in order to get close enough to him to pull off this plan in the first place is just priceless as is his reaction to the fact that she apparently goes around marrying every guy she meets. It's just a thing that she does. But then they start dropping hints that this is the last time we're ever going to see River and the episode flips itself around and becomes one of the most emotional episodes of the series. The scene when River finally realizes who the Doctor is, is so moving that it's the second episode of the series to ever bring me to tears. The first being the episode where Tennant's Doctor has to say goodbye to Rose 
on the beach, fans of the show will know exactly which episode I'm talking about. And I wish I could just show you the entire scene, but in order to be able to do that, I'd have to include it in this video with the understanding that I wouldn't be able to monetize it. So that's just what I'm going to do. If you don't want to watch this scene, if you haven't seen the episode yet, and you don't want what I consider one of the best scenes of the entire series spoiled for you, skip to this time code here. I will give you about five seconds to do so. Okay. So, where is the doctor now? I haven't the faintest idea. Is that credible? It's true. You're the woman he loves. No, I'm not. She's lying. The doctor does not and has never loved me. I'm not lying. Confirmed. The life form is not lying. I I impossible. This is a trick. No, it isn't. My information is correct. You are the woman who loves the doctor. Yes, I am. I've never denied it. But whoever said he loved me back? He's the doctor. He doesn't go around falling in love with people. And if you think he's anything that small or that ordinary, then you haven't the first idea of what you're dealing with. Your Majesty, I assure you, she is the perfect bait. When this woman is in danger, the Doctor will always come. Oh, you are a moron. No, he won't. He's probably already here. No, he isn't. Of course he isn't. Possibly on this ship. Well, go on. Scan it, then. Go on, why don't you? Uh, River. Two hearts, stupid clothes. You can't miss him. River. Go on, scan the whole parsec. He's not here. God knows where he is right now, but I promise you, he's doing whatever the hell he wants and not giving a damn about me, and I'm just fine with that. <laughs> when you love the Doctor, it's like loving the stars themselves. You don't expect a sunset to admire you back. And if I happen to find myself in danger, let me tell you, the Doctor is not stupid enough or sentimental enough, and he is certainly not in love enough to find himself standing in it with me. And yeah, River is the kind of character who would lie about something like that, but not in a situation like this. So I believe every word that she just said. I believe that she believed all of those things about the Doctor before she realized that he was there with her. And that, as tragic as it sounds, for as long as they've been technically together, it took her that long to realize that he loves her as much as she loves him. But what makes the scene even better is that immediately after it happens, they fall into rhythm and end up defeating all of the enemies through only their wits, the way that only these two characters can in amazing style. They don't need to dwell on that moment because the two of them, regardless of how else they feel about each other, understand each other well enough that they can work through that entire experience entirely wordlessly. And then the episode just compounds so hard upon the emotional resonance of that scene by following it up with a scene which shows us that the Doctor does recognize that this is the last time he's going to see River, and so he goes so far out of his way to make sure this last encounter between the two of them is something special. It's just, it's fantastic. The relationship between the Doctor and River is one of the most interesting romances in the entirety of fiction and this is maybe not the only ending to it that I would have accepted but it's pretty goddamn good. I love this episode so much and I do think like I said before that you can pick up on enough of how these characters interact with each other on a regular basis to understand this episode without having to watch River's past episodes. So I do forgive the fact that this isn't technically standalone, that it is technically wrapping up past storylines just like The End of Time was trying to do. Maybe I'm biased because I do like the episode so much, but I am counting this as a standalone episode. It kind of helps, too, that the storylines that it's trying to wrap up aren't as ridiculous and convoluted as the storylines that End of Time was trying to wrap up. But uh, despite the fact that there was 
something of a Christmassy atmosphere in the episode, I don't know that I'd really count it as a Christmas special. Once again, it was an episode that aired on Christmas. People might have mentioned Christmas in it, I honestly don't remember. But Christmas wasn't really a key component in this story. You kind of got the sense that this episode could have been inserted at any other point in the series, really, just so long as it took place after all of the other stuff that we've seen River do over time. And the next episode feels kind of that way too, the return of Dr. Mysterio. It is an honest to goodness superhero story, just Dr. Whoified. It's a superhero story that plays comic book superhero tropes entirely straight with the Doctor inserted into it. The origin story of the superhero in question even has to do with the Doctor. And it's a super interesting concept, it's a really weird juxtaposition, one that I never would have expected to see, and so in case you guys haven't seen it, I'm not going to talk about it anymore, because I already probably spoiled one of the best episodes of the series for you, and I don't want to spoil anything else if I can help it. If you haven't seen this episode, just for how weird and unique it is, I think you should. Like, I don't think it's a particularly great episode or anything. It's it's fine. But just for how unique it is, I do think that if you're a Doctor Who fan and you haven't seen this episode, you should watch it. It's pretty interesting, and it does do a pretty good job of illustrating how the Doctor is technically a superhero. He's just a very non-conventional one compared to like a literal flying super strong cape wearing Superman type. But once again, it feels like an episode that could have taken place at any point in the series. The Christmasiness of it feels pretty incidental. Capaldi's final Christmas special though brings us back on track. The doctor has just been through one of the worst experiences of his life. He just lost his companion, Bill, who I thought she was fantastic, I was really sad to see her go. Like, she technically didn't die, but she's basically dead. And not only that, but his best friend from his time back before he was the Doctor, Missy, the current version of the Master, who had just more or less been redeemed, has also died seemingly permanently. He's all alone, and he's in the process of regenerating into his next form, but he's trying desperately not to let that happen, and it's not really made entirely clear if he just doesn't want to change or if he's actually hoping that he can contain it long enough that he will just die forever and not have to deal with this shit anymore. But he does not want to regenerate. He is desperately trying to prevent himself from regenerating. And as he usually does, the doctor ends up exactly where he needs to be, bumping into his first incarnation, who is also in the process of regenerating and also trying desperately not to because he feels like his life is over. He doesn't want to change into someone else. He feels like he's done enough as himself. And the two of them actually end up teaming up in a story which involves trying to save the life of a World War I soldier who is about to die. And it's not as if they take their TARDISes into World War One and snatch him up. He just appears where they are for seemingly no reason and they don't see any reason to send him back despite the fact that some weird glass entity is trying to take him back to where he belongs so that he can meet his proper fate. This strange glass entity is able to make avatars of people who have died in the past. And so Bill does make a reappearance in this episode as the avatar to this glass entity. And at first, this thing seems like a villain, but then there's a twist, and it turns out it's not so bad, and it's a super interesting twist, one which changes the landscape of Doctor Who as a series. And some people argue that the twist, that what this thing turns out to be, I'm not gonna tell you what it is, kinda cheapens the stories, not just going forward, but like all of the Doctor Who stories in their entirety, but I completely disagree. I really like this thing. It was called the, the Testimony, I think. And I think its mission is really cool and noble. And I can understand why meeting this thing and discovering what it actually is might help the Doctor, who seems like he's ready to just let it all end. I could see why it would help him to keep going. And at the end, they do end up saving the soldier anyway by reinserting him into the same place and time from which he was taken but also 
doing some time-space wizardry to shift that point in his timeline to the same point in time where the Christmas armistice happened. There is some past continuity in this episode, which prevents it from being entirely standalone. It really does help to know which situation the Doctor literally just came from, so that you understand his motivations. There's a character in here, a rogue Dalek, who is a character who isn't really explained. It's just assumed that you know what his connection to the Doctor actually is, but his role is small enough that I forgive it. I think the big thing here, the big continuity thing that ties this episode into previous episodes is the existence of the first Doctor as a character in the story. A lot of modern fans aren't really going to know much about this character, and so they might miss the fact that he's kind of mischaracterized here. Seeing as how he's also about to regenerate here, this obviously takes place at the end of his overall story, and he behaves as if he's still at the start of his story before he comes to the point where he starts to actively interfere in situations to save people. Early on, the Doctor was not really the hero of the story. He was just kind of traveling around observing things. He didn't want to get involved unless it meant protecting his own life or the life of his granddaughter. But eventually he did grow to a point where he started to actively intervene in dangerous situations. And yet the first doctor in this story doesn't seem like that person. It's really odd. He's constantly telling Peter Capaldi's doctor that they shouldn't be interfering in this situation and standing around passively in the background. And so overall he doesn't really get a lot to do and it bummed me out like the actor they got to play him he's really good and i really hope they use him again to bring the first doctor into future stories but i hope he's better written in those stories if we do get them because the writing for him here i thought was pretty bad still it's a pretty standalone episode and while the christmasy elements of it were a bit more subdued than in some christmas specials I don't think you can really separate the idea of the Christmas Armistice from the resolution of this episode, so I do think it's appropriately Christmassy. And it works as an effective send-off to Capaldi's Doctor that doesn't carry with it a ton of really obvious baggage that bogs the episode down. It's a good final episode for the character. In fact, I think all of Capaldi's Christmas specials round out to be at least pretty good. I think his Christmas specials on average are better than the average regular episodes of his run, at least. But I don't think they're the Christmassy Christmas specials that have ever Christmas specialed within this show. I think those go to Smith's. I mean, he had two episodes that were effectively retelling of the kinds of Christmas classics that people go back and rewatch in movie form on Christmas. You can't get much more Christmassy than that. So there you have it. Matt Smith's 11th Doctor is the Christmas Special King. I'm shipping Christmas! At least as far as I'm concerned, I don't know. Maybe you guys have different opinions. Let's see. As per usual, I'd like to know what do you guys think of any of the episodes that I talked about here. Or this crazy contest of mine as a whole. Let's get a discussion going in the comments section down below or over on my Discord. Link in the description, but either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.